Morning, guys. Hope you're well. Um, hope you're having a good time, a good uh, Passover weekend. And um, I just know that the Lord is going to be faithful in the midst of the storm. He's there with you in that storm. So we are so grateful that you have joined us. We, we're super excited. Um, and may you just be blessed in this word. Thank you for joining us. We're just going to wait for some, for more people to come on live so that we can start this journey, start this day with the word of God. Amen. So I, I hope that you guys are full of the Holy Spirit. I, I truly hope that you, um, I hope that you did your homework. Like one of my, a friend of mine said, I'm giving the, you guys homework. But I've not really, I just want to break strongholds today. I just want to break everything that the enemy has coiled around you. I want to break it down in the name of Jesus. So, um, yeah, so when, so it's not that I want to give you guys homework. That is my, not in my intentions. Um, I just want to encourage you this morning. I want to really encourage you this morning. You know what, this is the tomb. And I want to explain to you the tomb that has brought light. The tomb is not there for disaster. The tomb was there to bring light. So I'm going to share with you, but before I start, um, I want to share with you, I want to share with you something, and it was in my spirit, that <clears throat> this one morning, and I get my pa beloved, I gaan in Afrikaans groet, ek sê morgen vir allemaal, uh, welkom, en ek weet julle kyk, en ek is baie blij dat julle allemaal op lijn online is, so, Dit is speciaal vir my pa en my ma, ek groet julle allemaal in Afrikaans. But yes, let's continue. Um, so, I felt in my heart that the Lord wants to restore. There's somebody that out there that's going to listen. You have prayed so many, you, you gave your life to the Lord and you prayed that the Lord will restore your family. Um, you were seeking for a, a job. And you prayed, I think, for four or five months, I'm not sure. And God opened the door for you to, to receive that, that job. And then about two or three years later, you turned your back and things go, still going well. But you're not there where God wants you to be. And God says he, he's, he's waiting for you like the prodigal son. He's not going to condemn you. He's not going to judge you. He just wants to embrace you. He just wants to love you. So, um, <clears throat> this is a word of encouragement. If you know, if it's you, praise the Lord. Um, just draw closer to God again. Just start opening that Bible, dust the Bible off, and just start reading. God wants to speak to you. God wants to build a relationship with you. So, that is just a word of encouragement this morning, and I felt in my heart that you slightly turned your back on God, and God wants to bring you back, and He wants to build a relationship with you. Amen. So, family, um, what I want to do is um, quickly is um, if you want to tap into the ministry, we really want to help. Um, there's a few, and I'm going to be honest, there's a few car guards here close by us, and we really want to help them. Um, we really want to look after them. So, if you want to uh, tap into the ministry and be part of that, that what the Lord wants to do, please do, please uh, tithe in, we're going to share the, uh, we want to share the, uh, the banking details with you, so um, just bear with us, after the service we will share it with you, um, I'm just trying to do it right now, and I don't know, I'm not equipped in any way, to do this, so, um, yeah, but I hope you guys are well, I hope you have an awesome Easter, um, 
God is good. God loves you. And he has not forsaken you. He is still on the throne. Amen. So let's just pray and then I want to start into the ministry. I'm so excited to share the word with you this morning. So let's just pray and start this awesome day that the Lord has prepared for us. And please be part of this. If you love what the Lord is saying, just say, give a hand of amen or just communicate here so we can see that the word is really helping and touching you. So be part of the ministry. You guys are part so I pray that you will be part of it. So I don't mind to share a comment or so if the Lord touches you in a certain scripture. I would love to read it afterwards. So be part of it. You are family. We are family. My wife and myself, we love you guys. Amen. So yeah, Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning and we are super excited about this empty tomb that we're gonna that we hear about and read about. But Lord, there was so much more about the tomb. There's so much more about the word of God. And this morning, I pray right now that you will <clears throat> encourage us. And Lord, as we bring the word before you, and as we speak the word, I pray that every stronghold, every chain that the enemy has called around you, your children will fall off today. We, will, we are breaking the strongholds that he has placed upon them. We are breaking sickness that he has allowed in their spirits. We are going to break it and we're going we're gonna to get rid of it today, Lord, because of the word of God that's going forth, Lord. Lord, I pray right now that you will breathe over this word. I pray that you will take hold of this word and make it yours, Lord. I just want to be your vessel. I want to be your instru <clears throat> excuse me, instrument, Lord, and I want to share the word of God. Just like Peter, Paul, and David, um, and those guys, the, the disciples, they shared the word. And that's what I want to do. I want to share the good news. And I want to help them get rid of the strongholds. Lord, please fill us with Holy Spirit. Please open our hearts this morning. We love you and we honor you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Family of God, I'm super excited for this word. The heading for the word is the light. <clears throat> and um, the, why the light? Because we talk about the tomb, amen. But um, I'm going to share, I'm super excited. I'm going to give you the uh, awesome revelation that the Lord gave me. I want to share this morning with you. This is, this, is, this is powerful, family of God. You know, it's going to crush a little bit of people. And I know a lot of people is talking about the end times and they believe it. It's fine. But I want to show you something. You know, the word speaks about when Jesus shared the word, he says, let your kingdom come as it is in heaven, so it shall be on earth. Amen. Keep that in mind. As you, let, let your kingdom come as it is in heaven, so it shall be on earth. Keep it in mind. But I want to speak to you this uh, On Friday, I ask you to write down everything. Every pain, I ask you to go and write down the, the, the sickness that you, you're currently having. Is the addiction, remember if you've got an addiction, it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's something that God can work into your life. It's something that God wants to break off you. It's, take it, it's not your portion. So if you've got addiction, I pray that you will write it down. Don't feel condemned. We're not here to condemn you. Yeah, we're here to help you be set free because God came. Jesus came to set us free. Jesus came to, to break all the strongholds. So that's why I ask you. So this more, uh, Friday, I ask you to write down <clears throat> the burdens, the sufferings, all that. I ask you guys to write it down. And I hope it is in front of you. I hope all that strongholds, all that burdens, all the sufferings, all the pain that you've going through, the, 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 the addiction that you're struggling with, it is in front of you. It's on that piece of paper because we're going to get rid of it this morning. We're going to turn it into something beautiful. Amen. So I hope that you wrote it down. Why did I ask you? Because God wants to do something in your new life. He wants to give you something new. But I want to show, I want to share it with you this morning. Luke 23. I'm going to go to Luke 23. And I'm going to read from 50 to 54. Just four verses. Just listen here. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph. He was a member of the Jewish high council. 
but he had not agreed with the decision and the actions of the other religion leaders. You see, this is just this is another teaching, but this just shows you if something doesn't feel right, if the if people make choices and decisions, and it doesn't, it doesn't mean you don't have to follow that. If it doesn't feel that this is from God, don't do it. Don't be part of it. Rather stay on one side and do what God wants you to do. So this part alone tells us we do not always agree with things. And if God speaks in your spirit, we have an individual relationship with him. We need to be obedient. Step away. Rather not go into that. God is warning you. God wants to protect you. But this is a teaching for another day. I'm carrying on. He was from the town of Aramea in Judea. And he was waiting for the kingdom of God to come. See, he was waiting for the kingdom of God to come. Okay? He went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Then he took the body down from the cross, wrapped it in a long sheet of linen clothing, and laid it in a new tomb that had been carved out of a rock. This was done late on Friday afternoon, the day of preparation, as the Sabbath was about to begin. Family of God, I hope you found that and received that word. I want to share it again. I'm going to read from 53. Just listen and just open your hearts to receive this morning. But listen, yeah. Then he took the body down from the cross and wrapped it in a long sheet of linen clothes and laid it in a new tomb that had been carved out of a rock. Family, there's other translations that says, a tomb that's never been used. And that stood out for me. When I read that, the Lord it just pierced my heart. Why? Because I want you guys to go to Matthew 9, 17. It says, and no one puts new wine into old wine skin. For the old skin will burst for, from the pressure spilling the wine. And ruin the skin. New wine. Listen to me, family of God. This is powerful. New wine is stored in new wine skin. So that both are preserved. What does preserve means? Take care of. Looked after. So the, the fact that, Jesus, that Joseph placed Jesus in a new tomb. Because of the blood. When Jesus... Listen, when Jesus spoke to the disciples at the Last Supper, I spoke about it on Friday, about the, 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 the sacrifice that Jesus went through, the, the sufferings, the preparation and all that. But just listen to what he said to the disciples on the Last Supper. That's what we discussed on Friday. Just, just stay with me. I'm going to read from Luke 22, and I'm going to start reading from verse 17. Join us, family. If you've got your Bible, just open your Bible there. Luke 22, verse 17. He says, Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He thanked God for it. Then he said, Take this and share it among yourself. Share it among yourself. For I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God comes. Has come. Has come. Okay? Now listen here, I'm going to read from verse 20, uh, 19. He says, he took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces. He gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. Okay? Now listen here. After supper, supper, he took another cup of wine and said this cup is the new covenant between God and his people an agreement confirmed with my blood which is poured out as a sacrifice for you the first wine he says shared among you but the second one is the new the new covenant the new agreement the king the new kingdom Remember how he taught his disciples how to pray. Let your kingdom come as it is in heaven, so it shall be on earth. Then Joseph says he was, he was going to wait till the kingdom come. And he took and he placed Jesus in a new tomb. New wine, new wine skin. 
when Jesus changes your life, my family of God, when he touches your life, he doesn't give you old wine and old wine skin. He makes you new and he places new wine, new blood into your body. This is why we are new. This is why he gives us new life. This is why when people, when you walk into the darkness, people see dark. But as soon as Jesus, is Jesus touch you, they see the transformation. They see the newness in you. Why? Because it is done in the beginning of the tomb. When Joseph took him off the cross, family of God, he placed him in a new tomb. Meaning new wine needs to be preserved in new wine skin. He was being, the wine was being preserved looked after for three days before he went to heaven. Because when he came to Mary, he says, Mary, do not touch me. Do not overwhelm me. I have not been to the Father. You see, he had to preserve the blood, the new covenant, to look after it for three days before he went and ascended and gave it to the Lord. And then God touched him and he went and he said to Thomas, touch me, feel, there's my wounds, touch me in my side. Family of God, the new tomb represents the new one and the new one skin. This is why we receive new life. You see, when God says his blood protects you, God says his blood will look after you, he meant it. You see, God did everything in parables. When he spoke to the disciples, he did things in parables. When God does something, he does things in prophetic ways to represent, to do his things. And that new wine, that new blood, that new covenant, is the, it shows us in the new tomb. He could have given anything. He could have taken the hole. He could have put him in Jacob's tomb with Jacob or Isaac. But no, he carved out a new tomb for Jesus. So now I want to go, and I hope that revelation helps you when you look at your new life, when Jesus touches your life, that you can see how everything was new. When Jesus died on the cross, he says, I'm taking your sin upon myself so that you can have life and life in abundance. That is the meaning. He did it prophetically in the tomb. John 20, verse 1 to 10 says, Now the first day of the week, Marilene went to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and they saw that the tomb has been taken away from the tomb. The, 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 the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out and the other disciples and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together and the other disciples outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he stooping down and looking in, saw that linen clothing, clothes lying there, yet he did not go in. He saw the linen clothes, but he did not see Jesus. But he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. And he saw the linen clothes lying there, and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen clothes but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciples who came to the tomb first went in also. Peter had so much boldness. And he saw and, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. I want to stop there, family of God. And I want to say to you, there's a couple of things that stands out. The stone that was rolled away, the linen wrappings, the hand, hand the kerchief that covered Jesus' face was lying apart from the others. Linen clothes, it was not part of one another. The tomb was empty. Now the thing that stood out for me 
in all this was the new tomb that Joseph prepared for Jesus, representing the new covenant, the new wine, the new wine scheme. But what stood out for me in this scripture now was the handkerchief that covered Jesus' face was lying apart from the other linen clothes. Can I refresh your memory, family? For Friday, I spoke about John 19 verse 2 says, And the soldiers twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe. Family of God, let me tell you now something. I told you that I felt the thorns was a curse. The, the thorns was the diseases that's, uh, that you think is upon your life, the sickness, the addiction, the things that the sufferings that you're going through, the pain that you're going through, that is the thorns that was placed. You think, the, the, you see, the soldiers thought they were funny, hailing him king as G, the Jews, and they placed the crown, but the, yet again, a prophetic thing happened that the, the curse of life was upon Jesus. Because I'm going to refresh your memory. In Galatians 3.13, it speaks about Christ purchased our freedom and redeemed us from the curse of the law and its condemnation by coming a curse for us. The only way that Jesus could have become a curse for us, taking our sins for, upon himself, was the act of the thorns, the crown. But it goes on. It says, for it is written, curses is everyone who hangs, crucifies, crucified on a tree, on a cross. So he placed it, took the, cur the curse and hanged himself, the curse, on the cross. And that's why they say, curse is he who are crucified. But the thorns, that is why, no, 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 you think, no, it's starting to make sense. Because when they looked into the tomb, they saw while the linen cloth that was upon his body and the, the, the handkerchief that was on, on his was split apart. I'm not worried about the folding. I'm telling you that they were apart. I want to speak about that because we all know when they speak about when a king folds and he puts it down, he says it's coming back. He's not done. But if he just throws it, it is finished. That we all know. But I want to speak about these two that is apart, the linen clothing and the handkerchief that was on his face that is not touching one another. It's not with each other. What does it mean? That the curse that the enemy is trying to make you believe that's upon you has been removed. You see, God separated your old life with your new life. You see, he protected the blood, speaks about the new covenant, the new, the agreement. And yet, the, the, the crown speaks about curse. And yet, it is separated, family of God, from one another. Why? It's an act that Jesus has defeated the curse that was upon us. The sin, the addiction, the, the, this thing that you are sick is not from God. It's a sin. It's a curse. You are not supposed to be sick. And yet now in the tomb, they see it is being separated. In the tomb, new white skin. In the tomb, the new tomb, God is busy separating the old with the new. The curse with the new. The promise. The promise that his blood has washed us free the promise that his blood is what it says this cup is the new covenant between God and his people but he had to separate the curse from the new and this is why when you when you read the scripture when you see that the, the handkerchief that was upon Jesus's face was not with the one that is on his body. It is an act that he separated your old with the new. You see, Jesus never holds your old life. He separates it. When we get baptized, the, we, the old life dies and the new 
has risen. That's why when we baptize, we are raised to life. Darkness stays behind. You see, the body, the spirit is new when we get baptized, when we receive Holy Spirit. And this is why it says new wine skin cannot go, new wine cannot go into old wine skin. And when we get baptized, Jesus makes us new and he pours new wine in our lives that we can see the light. Amen. So that represents, that that was split apart represents the past from the new. This is why Jesus defeated every disease and sickness that was upon your life, that curse that you think is yours. He has defeated that. And he has separated it from one and another. Let me tell you this. Genesis. Let's go back to Genesis. We're busy with the tomb. We're busy that the tomb is empty. But I'm telling you, there's something more inside of that tomb that God was busy with for three days. He was separating things in that tomb. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Then, listen your family, then he separated the light from darkness. How can God separate light, darkness that is covering you and turn it into light if he didn't do it beforehand? So now when he was in the tomb, he separated darkness from light. And that is why the two were split. That is why the linen was lying away from the handkerchief. Because darkness and light were split, separated. And this is why when Jesus, is, Jesus touched you, he takes away darkness and he gives you light. Why do you think I said to you right down, what, what is stopping you from entering the light that God has for you? Is it addiction? Is it sickness? Is it sufferings? Is it burdens? Is it pain? What is this that is stopping you from entering the light of Christ? Because he has already separated it out of your life. He's already died for it. He took the curse. And when he went to the tomb, he separated it. He says, no more darkness. I will not be re remind you of your past. I'm going to do something new. Just as Jeremiah speaks, can the potter not do as he please to break down and build up? And that is what happened in the tomb, family of God, when he separated our past with our new life. And that's why, Paul, that's why when I read the scripture, that stood out that the handkerchief and the linen clothes that was in his body were separated because God took that curse and he separated it so that you can enter the light. Because the word says, the, the God of this world has blinded us. That is Satan. Satan has blinded us because he's allowing this darkness in our lives. And we cannot see the light of Christ. Yet Jesus separated in the beginning. In, in the word it says, Ecclesiastics, that God speaks and he says, he tells us, whatever he has done, he will do it again. What has ever, ever happened there, or shall happen now. So when you see you are sick, and you, are being, you feel you're, there's a curse upon you, just know when Jesus went to the tomb, he separated the curse, that the handkerchief and the linen, he separated that just for you, so that you can enter a new life. Enter something new. Now, just think about it. When he speaks about you cannot put old wine into new wine, it will not last. God needs to separate all darkness, all darkness, so that you can receive the light of life. You know, in John 3.16, I'm going to tell you, because now this will make sense to us 
just going to go to the word quickly. John 3.16 says, for God, loves, for God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Why? Because he had to separate something. Just like you read in Genesis. He says, in Genesis, then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from darkness. When you get baptized, family of God, when you get baptized, the child of the Most High, when you get baptized, God is busy separating the darkness and allowing light to cover you. Now, I want to ask you, on Friday, I'll ask you, I'll ask you to write down everything that is burdening you. On Friday, I'll ask you to write down your sufferings, your addictions, your pain, your, your burdens, your debt. Write it down. Write the sickness down. And now I want to ask you to tear it apart. Yes, tear that piece of paper up, family of God, because you are separating that from you, because God dealt with it. God has dealt with it. You don't have to hold on to that stronghold. You don't have to hold on to that pain. You don't have to hold on to that sufferings. You don't have to hold on to that sickness. That is not yours. Jesus died on. He was cursed because of that. And now he separated it in the tomb. So when he walked out, he did not take that with him. He brought, walked out of the tomb with new blood, new wine, new promises, new life. New, 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 new. And he left the curse that you think is in the cross, in the tomb. But he first for three days separated everything and made everything new for the three days. And when he walked out, he knew when he's going to walk out of that tomb, everything is going to become new. This is beautiful. This is amazing. We are holding on to things that is bringing us down. We are holding on to things that is not our portion. God says, lean on me. Believe in me. Hold on to me. I'm going to give you a new hope, new life, new faith. <clears throat> I was in so much darkness when I lost my dad. But after I gave my life to the Lord, he, he opened my eyes. And I had a Awesome spiritual fathers. I, I have awesome spiritual fathers. I had awesome people, prophets that were speaking into my life. You made me realize my, my dad that is in my life, my earthly dad, he's so much involved in my life. He gives me so much hope. Why? Because God made new. Everything new. And that's what he wants to do with you. When you give your life to the Lord, you must know the, the thing that is making you sick is dealt with. It's been separated a long time ago so that you will not enter these burdens, this sickness, this addiction. Tear it up, family of God. It is not yours to deal with. God has dealt with it. He has already separated it from your life. Why do you think John 1... 4 to 5 says, the word gave life to everything that was created. And his life brought light to everyone. His life, his life, in, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness cannot never extinguish it. Darkness cannot destroy you because it was separated there in the tomb. Your thing that you think is bringing dark, it was already dealt with. Now the thing is, God says, and his life brought life, life to everyone. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord, it brings life. It brings light. Everything is showing and it's beautiful because of what he has done in the tomb for you. That he took that curse and he has separated from your new life. Remember, family of God, the blood, the new covenant speaks of the agreement, the promises that God has for you. The promises that, that, that there's no more sin upon your life. He's not going to condemn you. There's no more condemnations to those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what happened in the tomb. 
Jesus could have walked the first night out of the tomb, but he says, I will be raised from to life in three days. Because he looked after the blood and he had to separate the darkness from light. He had to separate it, your old for your new. And this is why we are glowing. This is why people glow when they meet the Lord Jesus Christ. Because they, he loved you. When he was on that cross, he had you in your, on his mind. He said, I'm going to take your sin upon myself. A spotless lamb took every beating for, upon himself so that we can walk into the light of life. Colossians, Colossians 1, 13 to 14 says, For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son, who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins, separated everything so that we can have a new life. God didn't say, I'm going to hold on to your old life. God didn't say, I'm going to curse you with sickness because you turned your back on me. This is not, this is a curse from the pit of hell. You are not supposed, I pray right now, as you tear that piece of paper up, as you get rid of that curse that what you think and thought that was upon you, I pray right now that you are healed because of the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Because he has separated sickness from the light. That sickness is not yours. You are healed. You are covered by the blood of Jesus. That depression is fallen upon you, off you, off you. That thing, that is why God says we are not chained, but we're going to be changed because of the word of God. He's going to change us. That is why you are renewed in Christ. That is why everything is new, because everything was separated for you in the tomb. And when you rose to life, that's how we get new life. Old is gone, it's gone, it's gone forever. You just don't have to, don't, just don't turn your back on God. Keep, a, try to be righteous and pure in the eyes of the Lord. Try to, to read your word, read the word constantly before you go to bed, before you even start your day. Read the word of God to encourage you, to fill your spirit up because the enemy is going to try to deceive you. He's going to try to, for you to turn your back on God. And he's going to place all these things in your life, sickness, depression, anxiety, fear. He's getting it right. So many people is walking in fear. But he says, but why? I've already said, I already dealt with that. It's no more your, our, it's not even our portion, family of God. So I pray right now, I pray that you will be filled with Holy Spirit. I pray right now that as you, tore that thing up, that curse that you were th thought it was upon your life, just break it down into the anything, in pieces and throw it away and never go and look into that again. Because I want to end with this, I, I know it's short, but I want to end with this to, this morning because now you have a picture of the tomb and if you go to Job 33 verse 28 it says, God has delivered me from going down the pit. God has delivered me from going down to the pit and I shall live to enjoy the light of life. Why? Because he took that thorns upon himself. He took diseases, sickness, anxiety, burdens upon himself so that we can enjoy the light of life. We're supposed to enjoy life, family of God. We're supposed to enjoy each other's company. We're supposed to show one another kindness and love and mercy and grace. But because of this heavy burden and this anxiety that we are carrying, we don't enjoy life. This reason because he, the, the, the Satan has darkened our lives, Satan has blinded us, we don't enjoy it. And yet Jesus went through all the sufferings on the cross, went to the tomb, he separated your sickness from your new life. And when you walked out there, he says, I'm going to give them. They are, they, that's a promise. That's the agreement that my new wine, new blood is going to make. And the funny thing is, family of God, Jesus said to um, 
these disciples when he gave them the wine and said, you must share it among you because I will not drink it again until the kingdom comes. But straight after the bread, he had another wine that represent the kingdom of God, that represent that the new covenant, the new, the new kingdom, the new heavens. So I believe that we are in the kingdom of God, family of God. We just need to live a pure life. Try. Try to walk righteously with the Lord. Try to build that relationship with God because we are not left behind. We are with Him. He's here with us. And I'm going to prove it in Revelations 21 verse 3. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among His people. He will live with them and they will be His people. God Himself will, will be with them. See, he said to his disciples, I will not take this until the kingdom comes. But then he took another one. He took it. And he says, this is the new covenant. This is new. We are walking in God's kingdom. If you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to you're gonna walk in his kingdom. He's going to give you a Holy Spirit to help you. He's going to give you a Holy Spirit to guide you and protect you. But he's going to be among you. He's going to be there to help and support you. Family of God, when Jesus walked in, out of that tomb, he had one thing out of, on his mind, and that was to give us new life. And this is why we celebrate the resurrection. This is why we can see how God can, has separated everything because of the love that he has for you. I hope really this word has encouraged you to, to give your life to the Lord, to to, to to want to have this desire to see the light that God has for you. Don't worry about the past. Don't condemn you of your past because the past has dealt with it, separated from the new life that God has for you. He wants to give you a hope. He wants to give you faith. He wants to give you life. He wants to save you from the pit of hell. And he wants you to enjoy the light of so when we look at the tomb and we see what Peter saw, and Peter saw that the things were separated, God separated your old life for the new. All you need to do is open your heart for him to come in. He loves you, family of God. He treasures you, and that's why he done all these things in three days. Because of the love that he has for you. Family of God, may you have a super blessed day. Enjoy it with your family. Make it a time to spend even more time with your spouse. Just even if you just sit and talk about the future, talk about life, talk about things that brings hope and not distract disaster. We love you guys. We we really appreciate you guys coming in. And spending time with us this morning. And I pray that the Lord has really, really touched your life. And that you can see that the tomb was there to bring life, not to bring disaster. May you have, be blessed, may you stay blessed and please if this message helped you, just give me an amen so that we can glorify God. Because it's not my word, it's His word. And um, like I asked you guys in the beginning, we are busy looking. We want to try to help the car guards from Checkers down the street. They are in, we are in contact with one of them. They're really in need of food. So we're going to put down the banking details. If you want to sow into the ministry and help that we can feed in especially in a time you see Jesus they never just shared the word he also made sure that they were fed like the five loaves of bread and the two fishes and that's what we want to do we want to feed them in a time of crisis we want to feed them in a time of need we don't want to feed them when there's no when they don't need it why why now why then we want to do it now while we still can may you guys be blessed stay blessed and I pray, glorify God for separating your old for the new.
we honor you. I just want to pray before we end. Heavenly Father, I just want to come before you this morning. I want to bring you all the praise and honor. I want to say thank you for separating the old so that I can step into the new. Thank you that I can give my life to you and know that there's always light. Even in the darkest alley, you're going to provide the light. Lord, you're an amazing Father. You're an awesome God. And we just want to honor you this morning. We just want to praise you this morning. We want to thank you for everything that you are doing in our lives. Thank you for suffering on the cross. Thank you for giving your body, preparing your body for the light for us. So that we have a new covenant, a new blood that will stream into our lives. You're amazing and you're wonderful and we honor you for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, stay blessed. Look out for the uh, banking details. We really want to help this family, these people. Stay blessed.